Hi everyone, uh, this is a quick little setup by request of a problem in our book. This is problem 5.91 in uh, the uh, textbook, so this is 5.91, and it describes a situation where we have um, an inclined plane that's frictionless uh, with a light pulley and massless ropes uh, connecting two masses, M1 and M2. Uh, in your book, these are given as mass one is 100 and mass two is 50 kilograms. And then I have two angles uh, that I'll call theta and phi, which have angles of 30 and 53.1 in your book, respectively. And the question is, what is the acceleration of each block in the system? Uh, given this coupled uh, relationship. So the standard pattern that we use for all of these is to uh, draw a setup. So the first thing we'll always do is we will set up a free body diagram. Uh, and so for mass one, uh, the forces on it are the normal force N, which uh, sort of keeps it from falling into the block. We have its weight, which is M1G for reasons. I'm going to write that over here. And then we have the tension force that's pulling it up the ramp. Uh, for M2, uh, we have a similar scenario where we have a different normal force. Uh, I'm going to call this N2. I'll call this one N1 just to keep those two normal forces separate. Uh, we have a weight for that, which is M2G. And then we have a tension force also pulling it up the ramp. Now, um, what we want to do is to set up coordinate systems. And this is an example of a case where we're going to choose two different coordinate systems that are associated with the normal tangential coordinates for each block, respectively. So for the first block, I'm going to pick an NT coordinate system that's pointed up the ramp like that. And for the second block, I'm going to pick an NT coordinate system that is pointed down the ramp like that. Oops, I have called my coordinate systems. This is the tangential, that's the normal. Uh, this is the, uh, heat. This, is, this one here should be the tangential and the normal. So this should be the tangential and the normal there. So we have these two separate coordinate systems. And the reason why we set up these coordinate systems as kind of an individual uh, for each block is that we can pick them so that they relate uh, to each other and we can make the decomposition in those coordinate systems to be uh, a lot easier. So the way we set this up is we go ahead and pick uh, these two coordinates and we have to make the fundamental realization that the acceleration for block one and and block two are coupled together. So if M1 moves up the ramp, M2 will move down its side of the ramp. And that explains why it makes sense to kind of pick these two NT directions to go in the same direction, uh, or in the directions that are shown, is that if I move M1 up, M2 is going to slide down the ramp in its direction by the same amount. And so I can set up in each of these coordinate systems, I can write down F equals MA. And uh, the way I have the, uh, this um, sort of chosen, I am going to do this uh, decomposition where this here represents the angle theta. Uh, and that you can sort of see that if theta here went to zero, this here, then the uh, weight would be projected entirely in that direction. So that would be small, and then the normal force would be pointed straight up, and then the tension force would be pointed horizontally. So I know that that's theta, and then I can do the decomposition in that coordinate system of M1G uh, cos theta is going to be opposite the um, normal force, and then coming down this direction is going to be a, comp a component M1G cos theta. Uh, similarly, over here, we're going to have a coordinate system here that we can decompose. And uh, in this coordinate system over here, this has the angle of phi. Oops, it should be a phi. And so in this case, I have the component along here is M2G cos phi, and the component down the ramp is M2G 
sine phi. And the way I've selected this, uh, the coordinate systems uh, that we're, we're, we've chosen, we know that we have the coordinate system in the normal direction uh, over here is going to be that n1 minus m1g cos theta is going to be zero because it doesn't accelerate relative to that coordinate system. And the sum of the forces in the tangential direction is just going to be the tension, which is pulling up the ramp, and that's in the positive direction as the tangential forces are uh, drawn. Uh, and then we're going to be opposed by m1g sine theta, and that's going to be equal to m1a1. And I'm sort of being particular about this uh, because I have to link the block uh, acceleration block one to block two. Uh, similarly, over here, for the sum of the forces in my normal coordinates for block 2, uh, that's going to give me that n2 minus m2g uh, cos phi, cos phi, that's going to be 0, and the sum of the forces in the tangential direction is going to be uh, m2g sine phi minus the tension is going to be m2a2. Okay, so an important thing to note what happened here is that I've picked a coordinate system, nt there and an nt there, so that the tangential directions kind of agree with each other. If m2 moves in the positive t direction for its coordinate system, m1 moves in the positive uh, t direction for the M1 coordinate system. Thus, I can make the association in these coordinates that A1 is going to have the same magnitude as A2, and for simplicity, I will just call that A. The other thing that we get out of a block and tension system is that the tensions are the same throughout uh, this scenario, whoops, a little too big, yeah, I threw out the scenario, so the tension over here is going to be the magnitude of the same magnitude as the tension over there. Therefore, with this physics association and the way I've set it up, uh, note that I have the, um, the signs are kind of reversed um, for these two terms, uh, given my careful attention to coordinate system. Here, tension's pulling up the ramp, opposed by the weight of block one. Here, the weight of block two is pulling it down the ramp, opposed by the tension pulling it back. And that's what allows us to make the association that A1 is equal to A2. Okay, so having belabored that, let's uh, go ahead and write down the two systems that we have, which is T minus M1G sine theta is equal to M1A. And then I also have that uh, m 2 g sine phi minus t is equal to m2 a. And this is a system of equation with two unknowns. The thing I don't know are the tension in the rope or the acceleration. The question asks for acceleration, so what I can do is actually do a fairly simple elimination, because if I just add these two equations together, I get that the tensions will cancel out. And so when I do that, I get that the m12g sine phi minus m1g sine theta is equal to m1a plus m2a, or factoring out the a, m1 plus m2 times a. And then I can go ahead and divide through by the sum of the masses. The acceleration is equal to m2g sine phi minus m1g sine theta over m1 plus m2. Okay, that's the solution, but it kind of makes sense, which is if we're going to pull in the positive a direction, which is pulling things down in this direction and up the ramp, then the weight that the uh, second block has sort of pulling down the ramp has to be larger than the weight uh, that the first block has opposing its motion, uh, and then we can uh, it's a little neater and say that this is m2, and then the whole system, the, that balance of weights, has to accelerate the whole system's mass, 
which is the M1 plus M2. So the, this makes sense. And if we had this second term larger than the first, we'd get a negative answer. And the negative answer would mean the blocks would move down the ramp towards M1. So negative answer would move it that way. Positive answer will move the system that way. Uh, so that gives the setup. I'm going to not actually go through any more of the math, uh, but this is just the sort of belaboring setup of uh, this block tension system.